Diablo 3. Please enjoy. who's a lead designer on the console for Diablo 3. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, our in-game for Diablo 3 and uh, some of the features and, and just general design philosophy that we have towards um, those systems. So uh, in Diablo 2 and the original Diablo, um, a lot of the focus for the in-game was extending uh, the past normal difficulty with new difficulty settings. So you'd finish normal difficulty and then you'd move on to, go ahead, move forward. So the normal difficulty was basically um, the core kind of gameplay experience. It was basically what you call the single player game, although they were always co-op enabled. Um, and once you finish normal difficulty, you unlock the next difficulty, which was Nightmare. So, and that provided, you know, greater challenges and new monsters and new items and things like, well not new monsters, but more challenging monsters. And, new items and things like that. Um, and then after Nightmare, you unlocked Hell. So Hell was even further, more dangerous, as you can see, there's a ton of monsters chasing you, it's scary. Um, and you know, made the game even more challenging, but the quality of the items uh, got better, and you got to level up even further. Um, and we're keeping all these kind of similar conventions for Diablo 3. You're gonna have the same kind of level from normal to Nightmare to Hell, but one of the things that we've done is add a new difficulty setting, which is Inferno. So the basic idea is that in Diablo 2, the um, focus of uh, the you know, difficulty progression was you kind of leveled up through each difficulty, and by the end, you really out-leveled a lot of the, the um, kind of normal difficulty, the hell difficulty stuff. And we wanted to create another one in difficulty setting that was basically maximum level. You get to max level, and this entire difficulty setting is basically customized for you. So, as I mentioned, it, it, this is kind of a max level difficulty. So, the player's maximum level in Diablo 3 is level 60, so the basic monsters that, that you face in Inferno are all at least level 61. So essentially what this allows us to do is it takes the entire game and kind of flattens it. It says all the content is available at the maximum level um, and makes the whole game kind of challenging and, and creates an even greater challenge than players have experienced in the previous games. And the nice thing is, is that um, that once you come into this kind of level, of, uh, you know, you're never basically going to level it. Since the player's level can never exceed the um, level of the, you know, even most mundane monsters in this difficulty, it's always going to be a viable place to go and find a challenge for how much power your character gets. All right, and um, you know, the nice thing about Inferno is that because it's higher difficulty, it has uh, new sets of items that drop specifically. Uh, done a lot of cool kind of item stuff um, in, with each of the difficulties, but before we get to that, I'll talk about monster progression. So with each difficulty, we change several things. And the first one is we change how monsters, monsters interact with you. So the monsters become part, um, and what does that mean? Well, we raise their level, and by raising their level, um, that essentially changes all kinds of uh, attributes on those monsters. So for example, um, if a monster is fire resistant, they're more fire resistant at a higher level. Their health increases, their damage increases, their speed, movement speed increases. Um, and in general, they become more aggressive. Um, so we have uh, several attributes that kind of control how often monsters attack and um, the, uh, how, how quickly they will pursue you. And all of those things kind of universally decrease as you go into the higher difficulties. And then the last thing we do is we have a lot of monsters um, that are kind of randomly generated bosses um, and several powers that can appear on them. And as you go into the higher difficulties, the number of the power, powers that appear on them increases, and we also have some powers that are unique to the higher difficulty levels. All right, so the next thing we do is uh, focus a lot on items. Now in Diablo 2, when you got to the higher difficulty, you got better items, but they actually used the same art that um, you saw in normal difficulty. So one of the things we've done in Diablo 3 is that every difficulty essentially has its own items. 
Um, so here we see um, the first one's a shot of kind of a mid-normal difficulty wizard. Um, the second shot is nightmare difficulty. And the last one is, and I think that one's a late hell difficulty. So, and this hat is true for all the classes. Every class kind of gets unique armor looks and unique items as they level up you know, through the entire game. So that's definitely a max level um, demon hunter. So this is the monk. That's our normal difficulty, um, early nightmare, and inferno. So as you can see, the visual progression really extends far beyond just kind of a normal playthrough. It gives players something, uh, a reason to continue to level up past normal difficulty. So one of the other things we also focus on is um, the artisans. So we announced artisans last year, which is essentially crafting. Um, and you can you know, have a variety of different artisans, and each one does some kind of crafting or item enhancement. Um, they have kind of a cart area that, that you see, you visit them, and as you continue to progress through the game, you'll level those things up. And there are several kind of visual levels of um, the uh, artisans that are only available in the higher difficulties. So here we have uh, kind of examples of the blacksmith. This one is the, uh, um, no, it's a jeweler. Yeah, it's a jeweler. And then the last one is the, uh, the mystic. So these are some examples of uh, also some in-game items. Uh, we have a suit of armor, the kind of the one with the orange lettering. That's a unique item, which means it's been handcrafted by the design team. So the attributes on it are always the same attributes, but the ranges of them can still randomize to have a lower or better quality. And then the other one is a rare item. Um, so rare items are completely randomly generated. And the way we've kind of tuned the game is that rare items are the, the best items in the game, but the hardest to get, because getting a really perfectly rolled rare item is a lot harder than getting, say, a unique item. It's got good stats on it because we can do unique items. So the next thing we talk about is runes. So one of the things that we focused on to extend past normal difficulty as the primary way that you enhance your skills is runes. So the first kind of two level of runes are available in normal difficulty. They let you do a lot of kind of customizing of your skills. But as you get higher and into higher difficulties, you unlock higher ranks. And each higher rank essentially powers up what that um, that rune does for you. If the rune, say, takes your magic missile spell and splits it into two projectiles at rank one, it splits it into eight projectiles at rank seven. So, and we've also um, got uh, gems as a major element of in-game progression. Now, gems are not actually difficulty restricted, but we only drop, say, about the first five tiers of gems uh, as uh, item drops. And you have to combine them to get to the higher tier. So it actually takes an enormous amount of gems to get to kind of the highest quality gems in the game. So we don't really expect people to be doing that until they're uh, well into the end game and continuing to essentially evolve their gems for a long time after they even reach the next level. So and this, this shot is just kind of an example of the difference between a level one character with no items and a level 60 character. Um, so you see we start with, you know, 10 attack and 9 precision, and we end up with numbers in the, you know, high hundreds. Um, this is also a really good shot to kind of show uh, how vastly the numbers can differ depending on how you customize your character. So in this case, the, there's over 700 vitality, but under 300 precision. So this is somebody who's focused very heavily on a very defensive build and not uh, a lot on credit say a crit uh, focus. So every, um, every character can really be built very differently from one another. So to kind of compare and contra contrast Diablo 2 in game from Diablo 3. Uh, Diablo 2, um, the item rewards as I mentioned were recycled, um, so the visuals didn't improve. Um, the hero's max level was 99, which was a lot higher, but the problem is, is that there wasn't enough content to actually cater to that number of levels, because the highest level monster was 85. So you just leveled right past the content, um, and essentially items and skill points and everything that you got became fairly meaningless. Um, there was a lot of repetitive runs. There was a very small amount of content that was actually viable, and also a very small amount of content that was the most efficient, um, which was not really, not really the best of situations. And there wasn't really any room 
to grow the systems. And uh, the dev development team really didn't design the systems to be grown uh, past a kind of full release. So one of the things we focused on with Diablo 3 is solving and improving a lot of these issues. So item rewards are unique per difficulty, so we mentioned they have uh, unique visual elements. Uh, we capped the level player at 60, so that we had some room to grow. Now we might extend levels, but even if we don't, what we really that provides us is the ability to provide content that is equivalent to the amount of levels that the player actually has. So as I mentioned, max level for monsters is level 61, so there's always a challenge. No matter, you, no matter how much power you gain, there's always a fight to be had that's worth having. Um, so there's also, Inferno makes essentially the entire game viable for in-game content. So the need to do um, repetitive kind of runs in the same area is a lot lower because there's a whole bunch of content that you can, um, you can visit. And that's one of the things in the future that we're going to continue to look at, is if we still see people targeting specific areas for efficiency sake, then we will likely go in and add systems that reward the player for playing a broad diversity of content, which just keeps the game interesting for longer. And you know, we've really designed all these systems to allow us to have kind of room to grow and continue to extend the game for years after release. And the last thing I wanted to mention is we have this cool 3D art um, that uh, we got done for us. That is the that's the address I see. So if you want to go take a look at it, it's really neat. Um, and uh, there you go. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Jane. Um, we will now have the presentation for StarCraft.